Hello everyone, this is another video or probably the last video of this chapter, Cell, the Unit of Life. In this video, we will study about nucleus, perhaps the most important and the most interesting part of the cell. Like we have CPU in the computer which controls all the functions. Or You have a, her teachers, computer teachers calling them the brain of the computer, the CPU. Likewise, in biology, we have nucleus the cell which is present inside the cell and probably which is the which is called the brain of the cell now as a brain of a cell nucleus has many important functions like controlling the cell controlling its many functions and many more things now nucleus can also be called as a hereditary organ Hereditary organal means it helps in the transmission of characters from one generation to another generation or continuing a particular trait of characters between generations. That's what we call herid hereditary. Okay. Now, you have to know that nucleus is one of the largest cell organelles. Okay. And we have studied that uh, in prokaryotics, uh, organ organisms nucleus is not very well defined it's just floating in the cytoplasm with no nuclear membrane surrounding it okay it's only uh, just floating in the cytoplasm and we call that nucleoid okay yeah in prokaryotic this these new uh, this nucleus is not member bounded by a nuclear membrane now, nucleus, we know that a cell contains one nucleus, but many eukaryotic cells may be multinucleate, like algae and fungi. There are many uh, organisms or even single-celled organisms which, are, which belong to group fungi and algae, which are multinucleate, okay? It means they have more than one nucle nuclei or more than one nuclei, nucleus, okay? Now, multinucleate cells may be of two types. One is synchytium or sinocytes. Okay, multinucleate cells may be of two types. Remember, one is synchytium and another one is sinocytes. Okay. Now, nucleus is bounded by a double membrane. Okay double layered or double layered and that membrane is porous means it has pores in it okay pores for the transfer of materials in, inside the nucleus and outside the nucleus now if we study the nucleus carefully it, uh, sci most scientists study the nucleus carefully and it was found that approximately nucleus contains 72 percent of protein 20% of genetic material which is DNA and 5% of RNA which is uh, ribonucleic acid okay and 3% of lipid the, these uh, uh, numbers this percentage is very important often asked in the exams so nucleus contains 72% of protein 20% of genetic material which is DNA and 5% of RNA and 3% of lipids. Now this is a very clear diagram of nucleus you can see. And these structures surrounding the nucleus are typically endoplasmic reticulum. And these red dots are ribosomes. Okay, So you have uh, seen in previous uh, videos that uh, endoplasmic reticulum connects with the nucleus. Okay means it, it is used for the transportation of uh, materials inside the nucleus inside the cell to other cell or from other cell to inside the nucleus so you can see that nucleus is the membrane is not continuous there are pores okay there are pores in these empty areas and also these are the nuclear pores okay yeah this it's also leveled here and you can see that this uh, 
endoplasmic reticulum is connected okay is connected with the nuclear membrane means it can it forms a passage inside the nucleus okay for transporting of materials now you see in the nuclear membrane also ribosomes are present now if you see the diagram you can see also inside the nucleus many substances are present okay like here it is uh, uh, you can see that inside the nucleus all another uh, type of spherical structure is present which is nucleus some thread like structures are present which is chromatin and important thing like uh, we have uh, a liquid liquid thing liquid substance jelly like substance inside the site of inside the cell likewise there is there, there is some um, liquid substance also inside the uh, nucleus this is called the nucleoplasm okay this is also jelly like uh, liquid like cytoplasm now comes the nuclear membrane the membrane which bounds the nucleus as we studied that nuclear membrane is double membrane and it is made up of both lipid and protein okay it is much like plasma membrane now the outer membrane is connected with the endoplasmic reticulum through pores which are called nuclear pores okay and sometimes and ribosomes are attached on the outer surface of uh, outer surface of uh, nucleus okay that's why sometimes the outer surface of nucleus also gets rough like the rough endoplasmic reticulum now structurally the nucleus consists of nuclear membrane which contains nuclear pore a cytoplasm like thing which is called the nucleoplasm chromatin we'll study about chromatin but remember that another name of chromatin which is a genetic material okay which is formed of genetic material is called karyolymph and spherical structures known as nucleolus now we talked about nuclear pores now what are the function of those nuclear pores okay the function of those nuclear pores are transportation of materials inside and out of the nucleus now one thing i forgot to mention in the first slide that many um, cells contain multinucleate uh, multi many cells have are multinucleate means they have more than one nucleus but many cells are there which uh, don't have nucleus at all or they had in some period of their life but they used to lose it at maturity those type of cells are rbcs and sieve tube cells in plants okay remember rbc human rbcs don't contain nucleus because they carry oxygen okay they used to transport oxygen so for more, uh, accommodation of more oxygen the nucleus loses its nu uh, sorry the cell loses its nucleus now the nucleoplasm or the cytoplasm like thing present inside the nucleoplasm now uh, this nucleoplasm is also called the nuclear sap okay very important the nucleoplasm is also called the nuclear sap which is uh, which contains phospholipids proteins and enzymes as i said lipids are uh, present in inside nucleus and their composition is 5% proteins are 72% and there are some enzymes also present inside the nucleus now nucleus also contains thread like network okay which are chromatin we'll study about it and uh, we know that spherical structures are present which are called nucleolus now chromatin is the genetic material of the cell okay chromatin is the genetic material of the cell and in simple means in normal times when the cell is not undergoing any cell division or any processes related to cell division the nucleus 
remains loose sorry the chromatin remains you can see here the uh, chroma picture these thread like structures in normal stages the chromatin remains loose extended thread like okay now what this chromatin is made up of okay now the chromatin is made up of dna dna is the unit of chromatin now chromatin is not visible okay Chrom the study of chromatin is generally done in stages of cell division okay because at that time chromatin is very clearly can be very clearly seen you will study in later chapters that uh, metaphase is the best phase do uh, uh, metaphase is a phase of cell division which is the best phase for the study of these chromatins okay now chromatin contains dna okay which are bounded by some basic joining proteins which are called histones and small amount of rna now dna is diribonucleic diribonucleic acid but rna is ribonucleic acid okay you will study about the uh, dna and rna in more compact details but remember that dna is more complex than rna now let's uh, see some diagrams which will help you understand the nucleus in a much better way yeah this is a picture i've uh, drawn of nucleus you can see this is the inner membrane this is the outer membrane these spherical structures they remain often connected with the chromatin okay and these are the nuclear pores okay these are the nuclear pores and in these nuclear pores there is a complex okay these nuclear pores are not really doors opened uh, so that anything can get inside and out there is a complex okay present in these nuclear pores which controls the inflow and outflow of materials this is known as n p c and the full form of n p c is nuclear pore complex nuclear pore complex okay which controls the inflow and outflow of uh, materials uh, inside and outside nucleus now you see this is the this is chromatin which is present in thread like structure okay this is a chromatin now uh, in normal phase chromatin stays like this but during metaphase chromatin forms chromatids which which is a more complex structure and at that phase the st study of these chromosomes becomes very easier now during normal phase you can see chromatin is present thread like uh, structures are present the chromatin is uh, present in a thread like structure and in this structure you can find two places one is uh, or two uh, what should i say uh, first thing you notice that these there are some you know uh, clotting like or dark dark uh, structures present on the thread of chrom uh, chromatins and they and coming out of these and in the middle of these dark structures there are these threads so let me tell you these dark structures you see they are these is the chromatin thread but they are arranged in close and they closed manner they are arranged in a very close manner now if i tell you like this you take a thread and just roll it okay roll it that area area gets means more and more thread gets accumulated when you roll the thread between your fingers so in these regions the thread is tightly packed and very close to each other that's why these regions there are some regions in uh, the chromatin thread where the chromatin thread is very accumulated in one place together okay they uh, are tightly packed and these are called the dark stain okay do you, and these dark stain parts are called the heterochromatin 
and they are inactive means uh, there are some functions of chromosome but these dark stain areas don't participate in those functions mean they are simply inactive now we will get back to this transcription process in a little later let's see the another the other structures of chromatin which are these just the thread like structures okay they are simply thread like structures and are called the light stain okay or the u chromatin u means true and they these are active because okay you see the light uh, chromatin structure which uh, is thread like which is not accumulated at a not uh, accumulated in a place is called the light stain or the u chromatin okay u chromatin it is active and then comes the transcription now what is this transcription now we know dna okay and rna now the meaning of the process of transcription is the conversion of dna into rna when dna is converted into rna inside the cell that process is called transcription and as these areas are very much uh, you know compactly arranged together the process of transcription doesn't happen means it's uh, can't happen as they are not loosely packed okay now you see dna you can everyone knows the structure of dna which is present like this okay two threads like this join and there are base pairs between there are some connecting pairs between them now you see this whole structure is a dna but what is rna then okay this is dna now let's see rna if you see rna rna is a single thread okay now if you take out one thread i'm giving a very basic definition okay you will study about these complex things in higher classes or in 12th so this is a dna okay you see th uh, two threads are connected one so the this is a complex structure where two threads are connected and they form the dna or diribonucleic acid now then what is rna rna is this single thread okay this is one rna and this is another dna rna they join together to form a complex dna now if i take out this uh, okay this uh, one thread it becomes uh, it be, uh, the dna breaks into two and forms the rna this was a basic introduction you will study about it in much more detail so this was not very really important just i just told some extra things okay now and small amount of rna those undi, those uh, simple rna is not present in much amount only dna is present in much amount okay now what are nucleolus okay nucleolus are nucleolus are some bodies okay spherical bodies which are present in the, inside the chromosome and are associated with the chromosome then what are the functions of nucleolus the functions of nucleolus is the synthesis of rna and they store and produce rna okay first thing the nucleolus produces rna and they also store rna and they they are also known as the production house of ribosomes so it may be asked in the question exams that what's the thing that produces ribosome so you have to say that nucleolus which is present inside the nucleus produces rna sorry rna and also ribosomes Now also nucleolus controls the metabolic activities of the cell 
and nucleolus also participates in carrying the hereditary material from one generation to another and it also helps in the division of cell okay now the main function of nucleolus or the main sorry the main contents of nucleolus are rna and proteins which are ribosomes now very important these nucleolus contains the precursors of ribosomes now we talked about ribosomes but we ne never really talked about how the ribosomes formed or what the ribosome contains we only said they contain protein but they contains a type of rna and proteins together okay and these rna and proteins form the precursor or the backbone of ribosomes okay now what is rna uh, okay these rna uh, uh, rna present inside the new uh, ribosome are called the rrna okay or the ribosomal rna because they are present inside the ribosome and proteins are also present okay now what i want to say is that these rna and proteins form the precursor or the backbone of ribosomes okay now ribosomes also produces sorry nucleolus also produces ribosomes as i told and another thing nucleolus is not bounded by membrane okay nucleolus is a not mm, non membrane bounded structure present inside the nucleus of a cell now let's study about the chromosome in a more detail or the chromatin here as i talked about the chromosome or the chromatin is present in thread like structure like this okay with these these red dot like things you see these are the nucleolus sorry these are not the nucleolus my mistake these are the histone proteins okay these are the histone proteins that are present on the body of the chromosomes uh, the body of the chromatin remember the these this is not a chromosome this people mistake this with chromosome this structure you see this is uh, this thread like structure with red dots you see these are sim this uh, is simply a chromatin this hasn't formed chromosome yet okay it will be chromosome in the time of cell division but it's simply a chromosome now if we zoom a bit we will see that the structure is like this with these are the histone proteins are kind of protein present uh, associated with chrom uh, chromatin now what happens these chromosome undergo condensation or undergo uh, undergo a compact arrangement during cell division and that com uh, that process is called condensation okay you see the this thread this is a uh, present loosely like this and during cell division they get extremely close close to each other okay like this they get extremely close to each other and condense with each other okay overlap with each other other okay and form a dense mass okay like this you can see here the chromosome becomes like this they get con they condenses they form uh, complex masses and this structure is called the chromosome okay this is a chromosome but another name you can call this chromosome is chromatid okay two chromatid jointly form the chromosome this single structure okay and the and this middle structure is called the this middle structure which joins up the uh, joins up the two structures these two hands of chrom 
chromatids are called chromatophores okay these are called chromatophores sorry sorry these are not chromatophores these are my mistake these are called centromeres centromeres and these centromeres joins up the two bodies of or the two hands okay of the chrom uh, chromosome which are called pellicle okay now let's have a recap what we studied first we see that the chromosome present in a loosely bound structure with the histone pr proteins present on the bodies then we see that then we zoom a little bit and we see that this is as uh, we see this these are the histone proteins and then we uh, see that during cell division they condense okay they condense like this these thread come very close to each other and condense like this and form this structure which is called chromatid and two arms are formed okay which are called pellicle and this pellicle is joined in the middle by a structure called centromere okay this is a constriction this structure, uh, structure called centromere okay and you see one centromere can have two chromatids okay or four pellicles now a typically chromatid is this okay single structure but when two sister chromatids or two chromatids join with each other they form the chromosome now this type of chromosome or this type of structure is only visible during the metaphase cell stage of cell division okay that's why you will study that the metaphase is the best time for studying the chromosomes okay i hope this is clear now moving to the next thing or the final cell organelle which is a cilia or flagella now what are the cilia and flagella the cilia and flagella are the motility organs or the mobility sorry mobility organs of the cell now the cilia and flagella help the cell to move from one place to another okay these are simply hair like structures okay uh, come out of the cell membrane and they are concerned they help the cell or provide the cell with motility sorry yeah motility now there are some organisms which uh, you studied about paramecium which has cilia and euglena which has a flagella they can easily swim in water with the help of these cilia and flagella respectively okay these organisms like paramecium euglena and many more single cell organisms use this cilia or flagella to move from one place to another now not only in single cell organism but inside multicellular organisms inside their tissue cilia is also uh, uh, cilia is present like uh, in some epithelial tissue okay these are group of tissues okay inside the human body or any bod any inside any body of a mammal okay these cilia help uh, those okay these cilia help those tissue performing some uh, movement actions okay now these uh, cilia these uh, tissues uh, no, the tissues which contain cilia are present in vascular organs or pipe line uh, pipe like organs inside our body okay pipe like organs where some fluid used to flow okay and these cilia help to uh, uh, this uh, contribute in the movement of the easy easy movement of that fluid by creating currents and also give direction to that fluid example wind pipe now in wind pipe the function of cilia is a little bit different to what i told now in wind pipe the cilia traps dust particles okay and push out dust they help in preventing dust particles uh, um 
from going inside our lungs and help uh, pushing out those dust particles outside our body okay this is a function of the cilia present in the windpipe now these cilia and flagella are made up of tubulin protein remember this cilia and flagella are made up of tubulin protein now moving to the next slide is the arrangement of the backbone now let me tell you inside the flagella or cilia there is a no there is a supporting structure okay which are called the microtubules these microtubules form the supporting structure of the cilia and these microtubules are arranged in the form of 9 plus 2 as i have as when we are studying the centrosome i told you that centrosomes help in forming the microtubules or simply help in forming the my, uh, cilia okay they are present in 9 plus 0 arrangement but here cilia the backbone of cilia or flagella which are the microtubules arising from centrosome are present in an arrangement of 9 plus 2 why 9 plus 2 if you study you will found that there are pairs of nine such circles on the periphery and two in the middle so it is called 9 plus 2 okay and these cilia are also bounded by uh, plasma membrane and the another thing the inner side okay the inner two microtubules are uh, uh, are surrounded by a uh, sheath okay or a layer which is called the central sheath so here our chapter ends in the cell unit of life will meet in the next chapter which is coming soon thank you